वेलकम बैक टू द चैनल सो यूजली अलॉट ऑफ पीपल एसोसिएट आइटम नंबर विद डिप्रेविटी और इज इट डिप्रेविटी आई डोंट नो वलगैरिटी आई डोंट लाइक दैट वर्ड ऑनस्टली वलगर वॉट इज वलगर एंड जस्ट इन जनरल सेक्शुअलाइजेशन ऑफ द फीमेल फॉर्म विच इज मोस्टली ट्रू बट दर सो मच मोर टू आइटम नंबर बिकॉज ऑफ द हिस्ट्री ऑफ इंडियन सिनेमा एंड वेर दीज हैव ओरिजिनेटेड फ्रॉम सो टूडे आई एम जस्ट गोन टॉक अबाउट वेर आइटम नंबर केम फ्रॉम हाउ How they evolved and where they stand today. Also, are they really relevant in the current day and age? So let's have a look. So first, what we should talk about is the history of item numbers. To trace that history, we must go back in time and think about the origin of Indian cinema itself. The first few women in the film industry were actually the wives. Now, before I even talk about the wife culture, I need to recommend this book to you. It's called Dancing with the Nation. It's by Ruth Vanita. It's I know. I always say that I don't read enough and I'm never able to recommend books to those who ask me to but uh, this is one I'm recommending uh, this has really helped me with this video so please go to check it out I haven't finished reading it let me know what you think before the Victorian era somewhere before the revolt of 1857 even the wives or courtesans were actually highly respected in Indian society they were the patrons of art literature poetry etc and uh, they were independent they had lovers they even got married and they had patrons among nawabs and uh, rich zamindars etc over time their relevance died out because uh, again victorian morality came into the picture and they were thrown away cast aside nawabs lost their land so they didn't have patrons anymore so yes a lot of the wives did have to turn to prostitution but a lot of famous the wives also turned to the indian film industry specifically the bombay film industry in the bombay film industry these the wives didn't just start out as dancers they actually started out as producers directors and music composers as well as actresses of course one notable the wife of her time is jaddan bai who was the actress nargis's mother and she was producing directing and composing music for films and she is one of those pioneers that nobody really talks about anymore this is in the 1930s by the way there was also fatma begum who was the first woman to direct a film in the bombay film industry called bulbule paristan but now the film has been lost to time now these women were mostly called baijis and as the british left india and left behind their sense of morality these women were again discarded or pushed aside by the men because they were threatened obviously by their sexuality and their open displays of independence they were suddenly told to enter studios from the back entrance and all of that because they were considered prostitutes at this time that's the kind of treatment you see uh, in kala the film kala is told by her mother that she should not become a bai she should be a pandit so that's how the wives became known to be as a result their art got reduced to just the dance and the music that they brought with them when they actually had full lives full of poetry literature etc but anyway one big thing that the tawives gifted to the film industry was the mujra this is something that you will see prominently in pakiza and umrao jaan so these are those traditional forms that you see these dancers performing in front of nawabs and zamindars eventually we saw indian films that had modern setups so there were gangsters people dressed in western clothes or even americans and british people etc in the film and for them a mujra just didn't fit the bill right so then the cabaret was introduced and at such a time you'll see people like helen coming into the scene becoming very popular item girls so now we have this whole division of the cabaret and the mujra and these are two separate things and you know the term item number has not yet been coined now eventually over time you'll find that the influences changed and there was not just cabaret and mujra there were influences from up bihar basically the nautanki and the nachne walis there were lavni influences from maharashtra in the recent past you'll find that a lot of the dance forms are inspired by telugu films and their dances another major influence is from the banjara culture of rajasthani culture so all of these influences came together and the item number evolved over time to what it has become today so originally it started as 
poetry and art and beauty with sensual and sexual elements here and there and today it has turned into a full blown party situation where sexuality is just one aspect of it all now how did we really get here so let's look at a few of these songs and dances and let's try to figure out how the singing the lyrics the choreography and costume even has evolved over time now if you look at the early days of the tawaif culture as displayed on screen you will find if she is the lead in the film then she will be a woman who is down on her luck like in pakiza or umrao jaan where she is not a courtesan by choice and you empathize with the character she usually sings a love song of sorts where she is either enticing someone specific through a song or remembering someone looking for a lover or she is singing about her own beauty the tone of the songs is rarely very arrogant even when she is singing about her own beauty at the same time you'll find that the dancing is very very understated there's a thehrao in the dancing compare this to a mujra from the early 2000s maiwari wari from mangal pande or mar dala from devdas the dancing is a lot more seductive with bolder more pronounced movements similarly in shikayat from gangubai kathiawadi we have a bai ji who is charismatic because of the attitude with which she performs making her seem unattainable the best part about shikayat is that while most item songs are addressed to or represent the feelings of a male spectator shikayat displays the emotions of a woman gangubai thus empowering her as a character in the modern mujra the woman need not be innocent and coy to be respected Now eventually when western styles started to come in you see a performance like mera naam chin chin chu happen where it's a fun number there's not a lot of overt sexuality involved even now at this point then of course helen went on to deliver some of the most sexual performances of the 60s and the 70s so if you think about songs like piya tu ab to aaja and you think about aa jaane ja and ye mera dil these are all highly sexual numbers a lot of these songs are about getting the lover to love you or come to you or waiting for the lover so all of these songs are directed towards a man in some way or other and here it's a vamp character notice that at this time the vamp was separate from the heroine so the heroine is a chaste good woman who does not sexualize herself who is very homely etc and the vamp is helen who's sexy who drinks even who entices the man with her moves and even even at this point a lot of these moves are very large like you'll see that a lot of limbs are thrown around even when the belly is moved uh, it's not always focused on as much as it is today so the sexualization has still not reached where it has reached now of course but it's still subtle in some ways now eventually what happened is we saw the vamp and the good girl kind of merging slowly slowly as society progresses the sexualization of women becomes more accessible. acceptable so in a film like namak halal you see a parveen babi playing a performer a singer a dancer who does entice and dance for one of the leads but she is still the love interest because society has evolved at this point to be accepting of a woman like that but the love of the man or the attention of the man is still relevant to these item numbers the real fun came with hawa hawai because if you really watch hawa hawai you'll find that it is like a parody of an item song so she's jumping around she's not overtly sexualizing herself and she's doing some silly mischievous activities hurting people just running about being crazy at the same time it's an item number where she's talking about being the object of everyone's desire so she's bringing in a new kind of woman a quirky woman whose sexuality doesn't have to be openly expressed but someone who's still desirable by virtue of her personality notice that in this song dance forms like flamenco have also been mixed the dances are slowly moving towards globalization now with this mixture happening you reach the point where ek do teen happens and ek do teen is that song that really made madhuri dikshit a star so here you'll see it's a mix of these indian movements along with western movements and slowly that bollywood style has already formed at this point from hawa hawai to ek do teen 
इट हैज टर्न इन टू अ सिचुएशन वेर द वुमेन चेंजेस फ्रॉम एन इंडियन कॉस्ट्यूम टू अ वेस्टर्न कॉस्ट्यूम विद इन द सॉन्ग वे शी इज शोइंग दैट आई एम अ मल्टी फैसेटेड वुमेन आई बिलोंग टू एवरी पार्ट ऑफ दिस कंट्री एवरी काइंड ऑफ कल्चर आई एम स्टिल सेक्शुअल एंड देर आर वेरी फ्यू सेक्शुअली मोटिवेटेड मूव हियर और समथिंग दैट एंटाइस द मेल गेज शी इज स्टिल दैट बबली प्रेपी कैरेक्टर हु जम्प्स अराउंड एंड इज हैपी एट दिस पॉइंट इन हिंदी सिनेमा वी हैव सीन अ सर्टन काइंड ऑफ लिबरेशन sexualization etc of the woman but you'll find her reaching that pinnacle of sexuality with songs like humko aajkal hai where uh, her midriff is a lot more bare than it used to be before and her dancing is a lot more provocative now you have the banjara culture making an entrance with songs like gupchup gupchup and choli ke piche kya hai the interesting thing about these songs are the lyrics both the songs are about two women who are pretending to be very virgin or very innocent or women in situations that they just have no control over like in gupchup gupchup she's saying that oh i thought that the guy i slept with was my husband but he wasn't i'm so sorry but uh, this is actually the portrayal of a woman who is really naughty who's a good girl gone bad the same goes with choli ke piche kya hai she is like i'm in my youth my jawani is coming out of me and i don't know what to do with it so like get me married off and i can just you know part and these things are illustrated by the dancing the choreography is heavy handed it is very sexual now at this point we've reached that stage where sexuality is oozing you know the midriff comes into play the bare midriff is one of those very important factors when showing sexuality on the indian screen more than the cleavage for that matter so a woman in a ghagra choli is very sexy for that reason again you'll find that gupchup gupchup has these comedic elements to it where something's happening in the background item songs are often used to take the plot forward while entertaining the audience as the villains of the film are entertained and the plot moves forward in the background usually in a comical way and that's a great way to utilize an item number now a lot of important developments happened in the year 1998 because that was the year when both china gate and dil se came out so that means we got chhaiya chhaiya and chamma chamma in the same year chhaiya chhaiya was of course in many ways not just an item number but i would argue that it was because it involves the sexualization of the woman and looking for love but at the same time it was a little more liberated the woman was more of an attraction in the video so the dancing was geared towards finding a purer sort of love purer i'd say but like less sexual but the woman is anyway used especially her midriff is used to titillate the audience now chamma chamma is a very different kind of song compared to everything else that came before it chamma chamma had extremely powerful steps now this is ganesh acharya's choreography you'll see this kind of choreography even today with ganesh acharya songs it's not just the pelvic thrust it's also the chest being thrust the entire body being thrust forward overall there's a masculine quality to this choreography this somehow adds to the grace of the song and makes the woman more powerful in this situation so she is not a demure happy go lucky sweet girl next store neither is she a vulnerable sexualized woman waiting for a man to take her she is an empowered woman with strong sexuality shoving it in your face and telling you what she's all about and also enticing you at the same time so it's very powerful the way this development happened the lyrics and the music work hand in hand with the choreography to create this picture the term item number was finally coined when shilpa shetty danced to mai aayi hu up bihar lootne and the special thing about this song is that ahmed khan the choreographer told shilpa shetty to just move just dance how she feels like and that's why there's an organic quality to this song and this dance number because it portrays a sort of realism that realism also comes from the film which is not really a masala film the film is shool it's a very serious film there are elements to it which rely on a bit of realism or being a little more down to earth than a usual masala film and the same is portrayed in this song which is really not an item number to titillate the audience but an item number which shows the character of the villain and creates a situation where the villain is comfortable in his zone and he is about to have an altercation with the hero and the situation is made into something else by this item girl who is dancing to an item number which is so rooted in the culture of bihar and up that it really stood out in its own right 
write in those days now in 2000 we had mehboob mere which was performed by sushmita sen and this was another key moment because this was very different from the item song which at this point had become about titillation this was more of a woman being arrogantly herself this was no longer about enticing the man it's about the woman saying that the man has to please her so it's about intoxication of the woman and that's why in a lot of ways the steps are very em powering the costumes are less sexualizing and more complimenting the female form so through this song sushmita sen created a new genre rather everyone who was behind the song created a new genre of songs where the woman doesn't just beg for a man she asks for pleasure her own pleasure in the early 2000s sexual revolution in music was caused by remix videos like kaata laga i talk about these in detail in another video so you can click the link above to watch it now in the early 2000s you'll find that a lot of the item songs became very westernized with songs like aisa jadoo dala re becoming all the rage and it started to get a little monotonous until we suddenly saw babu ji zara dheere chalo now this song really works because it plays on a lot of different indian male fantasies and one of them is a skimpily clad white woman arriving on a bhais and dancing to a very very bihari number that is so exciting to the indian male gaze and to the indian female who is also very shocked by this development but the song is also very catchy of course and so this became another staple now one thing you'll notice is that up to the 80s there were a lot of dance sequences where if a woman is wearing a skirt she would often have tights underneath which would be very visible because that's just how it's designed but by the early 2000s it was completely gone now if the skirt is shown it's only the skirt that you see and if it's pants then it's pants if the skirt is raised it's not like you'll see something else and it puts you off so these are all very strategic changes that have been made not just to the costume but to the cinematography to make sure that the titillation does its job. job uninterrupted so the pattern of the western item number was really broken really beautifully by kajrare in 2005 the catch step is of course something that the audience can pick up but at the same time the rest of the choreography was very intricate it was by webhavi merchant notice that moment when she does a little hair flip before she does angdai so adding these little elements makes it a lot more nuanced and gulzar saab who wrote this song actually said that he was inspired by things written on the backs of trucks in northern india so overall you have a picture of grace a picture of old world charm that takes you back to those times of umrao jan but also gives you a sadak chap vibe so that it fits right in into this fun little film that it's a part of then of course there was bd jalaile the very next year again a ganesh acharya choreography again loud steps loud music loud lyrics that show the sexuality of a woman it is still of course very rooted very realistic in the way it's portrayed and yet it is able to make the woman look powerful after this when munni badnam hui came out in 2010 it actually caused a resurgence of item numbers after that point there was sheela ki jawani and suddenly there were so many item numbers everywhere now it's important to note the kind of item number munni badnam hui was it was a part of a very popular film it was done by malaika arora who we know is the queen of item numbers the lyrics were also very fun they had things like a jhandu bam and what not at the same time the choreography was not only titillating it had comedic elements so it catered to every sort of audience and after this when sheela ki jawani came out it was a completely different kind of dance number it was a lot more modern it had english lyrics in it and it was still comedic but it was playing with an indian style costume while also sexualizing the woman and showing her as someone who is proud of her sexuality who is showing off her sexuality her beauty while also saying that i know you want it but you're never going to get it at this point the woman has become all sorts of things she is the heroine she is the seductress she is everything overall but the next thing happened with dam maro dam in 2011 where this woman 
Deepika Padukone is titillating the audience but it's not just really meant to only attract the male gaze you'll find that the way she's portrayed is attractive to both men and women because there are top angles and there are bottom angles the way shots were taken were not just making parts of Deepika's body look beautiful but her powerful as a being the lyrics of the song were no longer asking for a man or just asking for attention aaj mere liye chair kheech raha hai kal meri skirt kheechega all of these things predicting what male behavior is going to be at the same time questioning societal norms and talking about getting high which is of course it's the remake of an old song but it's a completely new take because here it's about raving entirely it's about losing yourself without the boundaries of gender and just being cool at the same time there is a little bit of girl on girl action in the video which became a big thing at the time because it was not seen before today it's something that's still missing from item numbers i would say that women also want to be titillated women also want to be seduced there were also ulala and agabai while ulala broke the convention in terms of what a desirable woman should look like agabai spoke about female desire agabai had coy lyrics sung with a marathi accent mixed with an auto tune to display the duality of a so called virtuous woman who also has desires similarly ulala had a woman proudly displaying her sexuality while singing a about the innocence of her youth being violated by her lover this is the duality of what is expected of a woman and who she is after that of course there were songs like baby doll and today we have nora fatehi who's brought back the belly dancing genre and then we just have this crazy wave of remixes where suddenly i would say that the dance the choreography the music the lyrics the context have all been lost so yes in a lot of ways a lot of the item numbers that are coming out today are not really relevant to the culture of item numbers in india uh, have you ever wondered why there are no men dancing in item numbers i mean yeah they dance next to the woman and uh, dance with her or whatever but she's usually the object of desire this could have been changed in a film like desi boys where these two men are literally playing male strippers but somehow none of the songs really titillated women as such like they weren't really done from a female gaze as such so they didn't actually attract a female audience i at least i don't personally feel attracted to that vibe however i think that was drastically changed when bhansali took the reins in savariya that song the towel song became very popular it was jab se tere naina now you can't call that an item song maybe you know because there's no actual flashy dancing there's no titillating a person in particular and there's of course no woman doing all that work but if you really think about it it's probably one of the first few times that i personally noticed where a man is seducing the audience so a man is probably seducing the female gaze and his form is right there it's played with a lot it's titillating the tall drops and you're like oh in the guise of a love song bhansali introduces the first item number for the female gaze i completely forgot to mention that they disco which in the context of the film was making fun of formulaic item numbers of the time and as a result became a classic item number in its own right one that took Shahrukh Khan from his romantic hero persona to a vision of desire flaunting his masculinity now tatar tatar is a full blown item number because there's ranveer singh literally titillating the women of his village who are fainting and taking pictures of his body the whole song is about his beauty the way he walks the way he looks and the way women react to him tatar tatar is doing what all other item songs do but with a man so yes there have to be more item songs featuring men where women are pulled in where women are attracted and especially from a film where there's already another item number called ram chahe leela where again priyanka chopra delivers a wonderful performance where she is heavily sexualized while also being extremely empowered with the powerful steps she's doing these powerful steps that were taken forward by songs like chitni chameli again by ganesh acharya she's run away of her own accord and she has had some daru and she's 
just partying out there and she's doing what she wants so all of this has been around for a whole century now more than that maybe somewhere along the line the item number vibe has been lost the beauty of it all the seduction that doesn't come down to just body parts the seduction that comes down to a little bit of nazakat a little bit of teasing a little bit of the costume and the beauty with which it has been made this poetry in seduction it's very intricate and when you make something like just a random remix where there's a hot woman dancing and weird camera angles and lights flashing in the background it kind of dilutes the purpose of the original item number which was a seductive beautiful take on indian sexuality which is normally repressed something that urges the audience to come out of its own shell and accept that it wants to be titillated thank you guys so much for watching if you enjoyed this then please hit the like button let me know in the comments what you think and don't tell me how many item numbers i missed because i didn't miss anything there are just too many i can't just talk about all of them so So yeah <laughs> thank you for watching subscribe if you like this and check out more videos if you want and i'll see you next time bye